maybe you say you're coachable. Maybe you say you're passionate about this line of work and that's just not the reality. That's okay. That's cool. Or maybe you just don't care enough. Maybe you don't actually have the work ethic. Maybe you do love dogs. Maybe you're a good human being, but you're just freaking lazy and that's okay. But you can't be that way around here. Wherever you're involved, mediocrity doesn't fly because here's what happens. When you got mediocrity, some people who are mediocre trash, mediocrity, what the hell? Nothing that's mediocre is okay with me, right? Because it's a choice. Mediocrity is a choice. So you got people who are mediocre and you got people who are super driven, high achievers, winners. People who are mediocre hate winners. Well, most time winners, they don't hate mediocre. Even though I said I hate mediocrity. I do, but like we don't, like I'm a winner. I win. I win. I put the effort into win. Even when I lose, I win because I'm learning something through that, right? So I don't mean that arrogantly. It's just a reality. I'm always going to win. I'm always going to fall forward because I'm always going to learn from the situation, from the experience, whether it plays out how I hoped or not. I'm going to win because this was just a moment. This wasn't the finish because you can't lose if you don't quit. What's up, Logan? What up? How are you? Good. Do I sound good in my ears? I think so. What about your ears? Do I sound good in your ears? sound fine in mine? I'm breathing crazy today. Like the mic is like picking up. I don't know. Fired up. I'm irritated. You run over here? <laughs> no, I just walked down the hallway. But I'm a little fired up. A little irritated. What up? Well, uh, I don't know, man. Bitches be tripping. Mm. Not really. Not really. Were you trying to hit the bleep button? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Just interesting. Just saw a post pop up today and it was like a 10 year memory. Right. And it was us in the house where we started this thing. And I'm doing like my second lesson ever. And I'm laughing at myself because I legitimately had a client come to our house and do a lesson in our garage on an eight degree wind chill day. And we went outside and taught heel with their one dog. <laughs> we did place with the other. And I'm like, what the hell was I thinking? Like, this, this is such a horrible experience and kind of creeper status if I'm being honest, like really, really weird. But that's how we started, you know, out of the garage in the backyard. And, you know, now it's like we got all these sprinter vans, all custom and logo. We have facilities. We've got a gajillion trainers all over the country. We've got, you know, the best equipment, the best staff, the best, you know, team of trainers. We have the best resources. We've got the greatest education programs, you know, ongoing and, and initial. I, you know, it's crazy to me, all these resources that are, that are out there. And yet there's still people that are just like, you know, I can't, I can't meet the standard because of this. I can't meet the standard because of that. And it kind of drove me bonkers today when I was thinking about it. Cause I'm like, okay. Or I hear, you know, must be nice. Well, it must be nice. Josh has those vans. Must be nice. Josh has facilities. Must be nice. Blah, blah, blah. Like I don't have jack shit. I, my people do. I'm not using the facilities. I'm not using the vans. Most of the stuff came about after I was done actively training and other people are making use of that stuff. But it's just really funny to me because even there's this little bit of a, even with some of the you know trainers that work within our organization, you know, it's like, well, Josh doesn't understand. Josh doesn't understand this. Josh doesn't understand that. And I'm like, hold up, fam. Like, what, what do I not understand? Like when this whole thing started, there was no facility for me to use. There was no vans for me to use. There was really nobody for me to lean into and learn from and meet up with. There wasn't a super formalized training program program for me to learn. There wasn't a ongoing training for us to continue to grow and learn. There sure as shit wasn't people for me to call and say, hey, I got this problem with this dog. You know, what do you what do you think? And I'm like, but we still got it all done. Yeah, you know, I hear people complaining they don't want to drive 20 minutes to go, you know, pick up a dog or, or do a lesson. And I'm like, man, when we started this thing, you know, I was working 60 plus hours a week. What? what I just know what that? you're going to say. Northern Virginia. Yeah, Northern Virginia, like four days a week, I would drive to D.C., to Woodbridge, Northern Virginia, three, four times a week, like clockwork, to pick up or drop off, you know, boarding trains. After, after getting off work for my 60 plus hour a week job that I had then when I started this. So, you know, I'd get off work at five, I'd run home, it's like by 5.30, I could change out of like work clothes into my dog clothes, load up dog, boom, we're now in the car for three hours. I get to a client's house, if I'm lucky, 8.30, and now I'm starting a two or three hour turnover. So if I'm lucky, it's now 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night. I'm done with that client and I turn around and drive home. And we do this three, four times 
a week. And I did that consistently for almost two years because when we were building the business, I had a lot of lessons clients down here in Hampton Roads, but we didn't have a lot of board and train clients. And um, I would help out our headquarters up in Woodbridge with with overflow, you know, dogs that couldn't accommodate or whatnot. So I was very blessed and fortunate because it was a great learning opportunity for me. A lot of dogs I could get my hands on to help kind of jumpstart, you know, the business. So yeah, that was nice, but I was willing to do whatever it took to learn and create opportunities. And, you know, people will be bitching and crying about, oh, well, that's five minutes past my comfortability of driving to do a lesson. Man, get the hell out of here. I don't care. Like five, five minutes. If I had said that shit 10 years ago or eight to 10 years ago, there'd be couple, you know, a hundred plus people that don't have current jobs right now that they currently have because I was like, nah, that's too far. That's too far. And this isn't, I just made a comment to our team. I said, this isn't because I just kind of went in on this a little bit. This isn't one of those, oh, well, in my day, I had to go five miles uphill both ways in the snow to get to school. It's not that type of thing. The point is we, we've got to be better now than we were then. We have to be continuing to grow and develop and execute at a high level. And if we're not willing to do those things, this isn't the place as someone can be because we're not just sitting back on what we built 10 years ago, eight years ago, five, six years ago, three, four, even in the last two years. Like, I don't want to celebrate any of that crap. I want to celebrate 10 years because it's a big deal. It's our 10 year anniversary, but that's not going to sustain us. You know, as we grow, we've got to continue to grow and develop, seek resources to get better at our craft. Most of us are. Some of us aren't. And my message was simple. It was like, look, guys, if you're not interested in getting better, let's just have a conversation you know, with either me or your head trainer and, you know, you got to go. This isn't the place for you because the standard is rising. And as that standard rises, we have to rise with it. You know, we have to grow. And if you don't want to, that's no big deal. Maybe you're not capable of, of rising to the standard. No problem. Great person gave it your best. It's just beyond you. Hey, no problem. I don't believe that's most people. Maybe you say you're coachable. Maybe you say you're passionate about this line of work and that's just not the reality. That's okay. That's cool. Or maybe you just don't care enough. Maybe you don't actually have the work ethic. Maybe you do love dogs. Maybe you're a good human being, but you're just freaking lazy and that's okay. But you can't be that way around here, whether it's with Off Leash, whether it's with Bay Rivers, whether it's with Big Dog Media, whether you're working in the, the mastermind group, wherever you're involved, Involved, mediocrity doesn't fly because here's what happens when you got mediocrity. Some people who are mediocre trash, right? And and I mean it as saying medi mediocre is trash to me. Like it, mediocrity, what the hell? Why? Like nothing, nothing that's mediocre is okay with me, right? Because it's a choice. Mediocrity is a choice. So you got people who are mediocre, and you got people who are super driven, high achievers, winners. People who are mediocre hate winners. Well, most time, winners they don't hate mediocre. Even though I said I hate mediocrity, I do. But like we don't like I'm a winner. I win. I win. I put the effort into win. Even when I lose, I win because I'm learning something through that. Right. So I don't mean that arrogantly. It's just a reality. I'm always going to win. I'm always going to fall forward because I'm always going to learn from the situation, from the experience, whether it plays out how I hoped or not. I'm going to win because this was just a moment. This wasn't the finish. Because you can't lose if you don't quit. You can't lose if you don't quit. Can't lose if you don't quit. And that's like one of a handful of spiritual gifts I feel like I have. Might be because I'm too stupid to quit. I don't know. But like, there's no quit in me. That's the one thing I've always tried to set as an example for you and your sister is like, you will, you will see me get beat up. You will see me hurting. You will see me stressed. You will see me beaten down a little bit. Have you ever seen me quit anything? Have you ever heard me talk about quitting anything? No. Yeah, besides 75 hard maybe like, once. Like some Monopoly or yeah, something. Monopoly, shoot. It was working deals. We had lessons learned for next time. <laughs> but like, I don't quit. Yeah, I'll flip that board. I mean, we're all quitting at that point. But like, I'm not consumed by or worried about people that are mediocre. But winners typically don't vibe well with people who are okay being mediocre. And people who are mediocre really don't vibe well with high achievers and winners. And so if you're trying to build a culture, an organization that is focused on excellence, and that's what we're trying to do. We're not there yet. That's what we're trying to do. And if that's what you're focused on, you can't have mediocre and excellence and try to mush them together. It's never going to work because the only way you get to excellence when everybody working together does their part to kick ass, to win, to dominate, to excel. And for as long as I'm okay having mediocre around, we can never accomplish what our major goals are and expectations are because the killers, the winners, you know, I, I uphold the standard. I'm the flag bearer. I'm running, 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 running with it, but I kind of gain as much as this person put in a mediocre effort does, right? And subconsciously, groups of people do not in 
instinctually gravitate towards the the winner and the the highest point. They're always going to going to gravitate towards the weaker option. They're going to gravitate towards the easier way. It's human nature. It's the easiest path. And so when you try to like, well, Josh, no, it's like you just need to have good leaders and they're going to pull everybody up and blah, 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 blah. <laughs> no, it just it, it doesn't it doesn't work that way. People gravitate towards the easiest path. That's why it's so hard to find a culture of just absolute beasts that are winning because it's hard to find those people. You can develop them, but it's hard because it's a constant battle if you allow because people are only going to grow towards the lowest level of success that you allow. And if you got a bunch of mediocre people around, which I'm not saying I got a bunch of pe- mediocre people around. Everybody that we have around is at a stage in their career where they're, they're doing exceptionally well and they're working on themselves to develop every day. They're new and they're super coachable and they're getting stronger every day. And then I have a couple that have been around for a while and they have all the skill sets under the sun. Incredible human beings. But they may be, let, may be letting their foot off the gas a little bit. That's a problem. That's when mediocrity starts to step in. And I can feel it and I can see it and I can smell it. I'm like, uh-uh. Nope. The standard is rising. Are you working to come with us? Are you putting the work into yourself to grow? Are you coachable? Are you disciplined? Is the health and well-being of these animals, if you're working on the animal side of our businesses, that number one priority to you? That's your focus. And it's provable by how you do the things that we ask you to do. It's not a yes. It's not a, a maybe or sometimes. It's a yes or a no. And it's documented. And it's proven. And you can see when mediocrity starts to slip in. I don't think we have mediocre people. I think we have people that are sliding towards some mediocre tendencies. And for me, that doesn't work. So I kind of put everybody on notice of like, look, y'all, it's, it's not flying. It's not working. You know, the reputation we've built over 10 years off the body of work that we've done, myself and others, and a lot of people who are, who are currently here, we work too damn hard to let some people let mediocrity settle in to, to mess that up for us. I'm not going to do that. 10 years, big deal, a big deal, right? It's a big deal, but is it a big deal? I don't think so. I want to celebrate 30 years. I want to celebrate 40 years. I want to celebrate 50 years. Your mom would say, well, you probably should start walking with me some more. Maybe, maybe we skip chips and salsa a couple times. Maybe hit the gym if I want to see that 50 year, right? And yeah, she's probably right. She's probably right. 10 years is a big deal. It's not that big of a deal because we haven't done anything yet. And I think that's the part that's been pissing me off in certain aspects is I feel like we got some people in the organization who are living off work that was done years one through eight, right? And like that, that pedal, that pedal, that gas pedal has to be pushed just as hard now as it was back then for us to get where we're going. I could have never envisioned us being where we are today when we started this thing. But since we are, the view from here is much different than anything I ever anticipated. So have we gotten somewhere? Hell yeah, we've gotten somewhere. Have we accomplished some things? Absolutely. We've accomplished some things. Are we done? No, no. 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 A couple of years ago on the podcast, we did a show about um, people saying, Josh, when is enough enough? I'm like, I don't, I don't know. Is every dog that needs help been trained? Is every family that's stressed out every night when they get home from work because their dog who's missed them all day is acting crazy? And, you know, they're hollering, screaming because their dog's acting wild and t- tore the house up during the day while they were gone. Like, is that has that been resolved? Has every organization that we try to help financially, you know, on a regular basis because of the incredible growth we've seen over the years? Are there are their needs gone? Is every kid who's hungry fed? Is every woman who's battered safe, right? Like <laughs> when's enough enough? I don't know. Probably a long ass time ago if it was just for me, but we've been given an opportunity that's well beyond us. And that opportunity requires so much more than what mediocrity can provide. So we can't have it. We can't have it anywhere, anywhere. If you're tired, I'm sorry. Take vacation and actually rest. Don't take, don't, don't go party every freaking weekend. Don't go on vacation and just be wild and out, you know, till three o'clock every night, get home the day before you come back to work and you're exhausted. Freaking rest. Take vacation and rest. Refuel because we got work to do. And if you're going to be around here, you got to work. This ain't no hobby. It's a hell of a lot of fun. Started out as a hobby, but this is no hobby. And I just said it. While I couldn't imagine being where we are today, the view from here also couldn't have been imagined. We're not even close. We're not even close. We have so much further to go. So much better to get. So many more dogs to train. So many more clients to help grow their business. 
businesses. So many more relationships to develop. It's crazy to me. I got staff who's been around a long time. They're starting to have babies. There's a whole other generation coming up underneath this thing. Little onesies with Team JW on it, off leash canine training. What? Come on. This is crazy. My son is here working for me now. There's a whole nother piece of this. He's little with a squeaky ass voice running around. We first started this thing. Nine years old. Now he's 19 working with us. How could I possibly be okay with mediocrity settling in? I can't. I can't be. I care more today than I did 10 years ago. And before I even knew what the hell I was doing, trust me when I say I cared a lot. Because I win. I don't fail. Am I losing a moment? But I'm learning and I'm growing because I win. Why don't you win? Why don't you change your perspective on what a win is? Well, it must be nice. You win, Josh. It must be nice. I've been getting my teeth kicked in for the last two years. You think I haven't? You think I haven't? Well, Josh, it must be nice. You've got all these locations. you got all these trainers. You guys are super busy. The last year has just been really hard in our industry. It must be nice. You think it wasn't hard for me? Think there aren't lessons we had to learn? Think there aren't things that we had to change? Well, Josh, you got a team to help you. That must be nice. Like, you think all they hang out here for my bubbly personality and because I'm a great friend? No, it's their job. And I'm blessed to have them. I'm thankful to have them. And they help me work through a lot of things. Do you think that makes my day easier? Having the responsibility of putting food on all these people's table? And get out of here. It must be nice. <laughs> Sometimes. But if you think challenges don't impact everybody, think economy doesn't impact everybody, you're out of your mind. Your excuses are bullshit. Your reasoning for why it's tough for you and must be nice for somebody else are clouded. These are just excuses. You an excuse person? You a solutions person? All I do is solve problems. We got problems every damn day. I tell people all the time, my team, and I've said it on here, I'm not the smartest of people, but I got that PhD in solutions, PhD in problem solving. That's all all I do. I'm not smarter than you. I'm not. I may not even be more experienced than you. I'm just not going to quit. And you're going to quit. And you focus on people having success as if it must be nice or they cheated their way to it or they did something wrong or they got lucky rather than maybe having a conversation and asking, hey, man, how's that work? Ma'am, can I talk to you for a minute about how you're doing this? I, I see that you're having some success over here. I'd like to implement that, too. Can you, can you teach me? Can you show me? The answer most of the time is going to be yes, because, guys, there's nobody talking shit about you who's doing better than you. The only people that were talking shit or complaining or bitching or whining, they're not ahead of you. They're not ahead of you. And your name's only coming out of their mouth because they can use your name as an excuse instead of their own. So why am I your excuse? Or why is somebody else's name the excuse? You know who fucked up my stuff? Me. If we got something that's screwed up and going wrong, you know whose problem that is? Mine. You know who caused that? Me. Was it one of my staff? Okay. It's still my problem. Me. Maybe if you worry about you and stop putting these bullshit excuses on something else, it must be nice, must be nice, must, must be nice. How about switch that up to, I wonder if they would share some lessons learned with me. They're a couple years ahead of me as far as this business thing goes. I wonder if there's any insight they could share with me to help me get through this troubling time. I can promise you the answer is going to be yes. I mean, I have had said no to a couple people, but I'm not going to associate myself with pieces of shit. So yeah, if you asked me for help and I told you no there, you know, I really think you're a piece of shit. That's the easiest way for me to put it because I'm a generous person with my time, with my resources, with my staff. Hell, it's one of our core values. Discipline, ownership, generosity, service, dogs, Dogs. Dogs. It's always about the dogs. We always make it about the dogs. A lot of you always make it about me or my team. It's funny. Has that actually helped you? Has that ever solved any of your problems when you're so damn focused on me or somebody else or my team? Or if you're listening to this, you're in another industry and you're so consumed and focused on someone else. Maybe maybe they're doing well. Maybe you want to be where they're at. Maybe they're the, the primary name in your industry. Why are you so focused on them rather than being focused on you and your thing? I'm not focused on you. Well, Josh, you sure are talking about me a lot. No. I'm not. Th this is education. I'm using the platform to, to try to help a little bit. I can assure you, I'm not focused on you. But I hear things. I see things. People share stuff. I'm like, damn, they'd stop worrying about me and worry about them. 99% of their problems would be solved. We all only got so much energy. And maybe they just don't have that many problems. 
And because I'm such a shit show, I've got so many problems. I don't have time to focus on, you know, anybody else but ours. I find that hard to believe, though. What's your excuse? Put that energy towards complaining. Put that energy towards envy and jealousy, which is always going to be misguided. Or put that energy into getting yourself better, to improving your business, improving your own teams, dominating your market. I'm not here just to do stuff. I'm here to win. I'm here to win. I'm not here to compete. I'm here to dominate. We trust you want to be awesome business? No. I mean, if you take care of different, let's just talk dog training. If you take care of dogs, you're a good human being. You do the right thing by animals. Hell yeah, I want you out here helping people. Because unfortunately, right now, we can't help them all. We can't. Now, if I get to the point where we can help them all and other people disappear, sorry, but I'm not sorry. Do a better job because we're going to keep working and do a better job. I want you to keep working and do a better job. This is how everybody benefits. But everybody is focused on getting better and growing and collaboration and working together. One of my head trainers, he said, man, I really want to try to repair the culture of dog trainers in our area, in our region. Everybody just hates each other. And I don't know if this is the same in the plumbing industry or roofing or or whatever, but in, in the pet industry, man, people are vicious. Man, I've seen suckers freak out because they don't like the type of crate somebody uses. And it's like this person's an abuser. What? Man, huh? What? Just the brand of crate that they use? Training methodology? I mean, the, the wrong methods or any method used wrong can be interpreted as abusive. You know, it, it's like it's so catty. It's just a funny word to use. But he's like, I really want to improve this. Everybody just hates each other. I'm like, good luck with that, man. Because people spend too much damn time worrying about everybody else rather than worrying about themselves. No one can be open to a conversation. Nobody can be open to improvement. I had a coaching call the other night and with my clients on there. I'm asking for insight from them and their opinions with the problem I'm having. Like they pay me to coach them. We get on our group call. We do twice a month. I'm like, hey guys, what would, have y'all experienced this before? What would you do? What have you done what do you think because guess what i don't know shit <laughs> i just i'm out here talking about my experiences and things that i've been through i still gotta learn and i gotta grow because i'm focused on me and my businesses and my team that requires consistent excellence and that's why the standards rising again and when you're in your companies you might have people who have been with you a really really long time that standard starts to change and they might be family you might really love them they may have helped contribute to your growth for years and years and years more than anybody else ever has then they can't be with you though for that next phase because they're not the ones to get you there it's not a bad thing that's growth and if you allow someone to stay in a role that isn't the right role for them or keep them on your team when they're refusing to grow or maybe they want to grow with all their heart they want to grow and they're coachable but their capacity doesn't allow for it well, guess what you got to make the shitty decision. You're either going to accept mediocrity because their capacity will not allow them to grow into what you need them to be. And we already know what happens when you accept mediocrity. The excellence and mediocrity don't mix. They can't stand each other because they don't understand each other. There's no common mission. There's no common vision. There's no common values between excellence and mediocrity. So as the leader, you have to make those tough decisions. And I think we're going to have tough decisions this year, Logan, if I'm being honest with you. I think we're going to have super tough decisions across the organization because some people that got us here aren't the ones who are and get us there. My role is going to change. It has changed significantly over the years because I truly believe the furthest point that I believe for us as a business, I don't know that I can lead us there from a tactical standpoint. I think from a vision standpoint, I can, but from a tactical, practical standpoint, no, I'm probably not the guy unless I can continue to grow into it. I got to work my ass off to do that. So Josh, what's enough? When's enough? I don't know. Guess time will tell. I ain't there yet. And I ain't close to being maxed out either. Like at 45, I've, I've got a pretty good idea what my capacity is. But every time I think I can't do something and we do achieve it, I'm like, oh, shit, new feature is unlocked. What, what, what's this version do? And so it's kind of neat to see. But I got to keep trying to get to excellent. And I need everybody else to do the same. How much of an impact could you have if you chase excellence rather than settling for mediocrity? How would your family look different? How would your life look different? How would your all hell, all your relationships look different? How would your business look different? How would your bank accounts look different? How would shared experiences with experience with friends and family look different? If you chase excellence rather than mediocrity. If you're not willing to put yourself on notice, let me do it. Mediocrity is not going to cut it. It's not going to cut it in 2024. 2020, 21, 22, even. There's a lot of stuff going on in the market, a lot of fake ass people, a lot of fluff, a lot of money in the markets. And it could disguise mediocrity. A lot of makeup on a pig, if you will. It, it doesn't work anymore. Excellence doesn't mix. Excellence rises to the top because it cannot mix with mediocrity. What are you going to be?
What are you going to choose to be in 2024? Catch you next time on the Big Dog Podcast. Love you, fam. 